All right, so here we go. Um, hi guys. Uh, so this is a video I need to explain right away because the title needs to be vague because if I would like to have the title, what I would actually like it to be, this platform's really stupid algorithm will not push it out to people. Uh, so I really had to sum it down to a few words. So I'm going to be very clear so people don't think it's clickbait because it's not intended to and it is the point of the video. But yeah, no, this mostly, this video is entirely going to be talking about, um, you know, problematic people with big followings and why a lot of smaller creators or people that are, you know, not even so much smaller, but people that, you know, have their own platforms don't speak out. Um, it's this new age thing you're seeing a lot of. And I, well, I promised myself that I would not be making a video on the uh, creep show art situation again with everything else going on. My hands are tied in this situation because it is the, at least for my mind, the easiest example that I can pull from. Now, if you guys are new here, when I do topic videos like this or serious topics, um, I don't like to name specific people because I personally feel like when people name specific people, it puts them in like a little bubble. And obviously I'm not saying that for everyone. I know a lot of people can think generally, but when you give it to a specific person, there are a lot of people online who then take it as, oh, this person's just evil, like this one person. You know, a really good example is uh, Onision. For every time someone makes an Onision video, which thank God hasn't happened in a long time, at least from what I see, um, there's freaking like 40 or 50 Gregs out there that are just sklarking in the shadows because no one's talking about the overall issue. They're talking about the singular person. So as you can see, this is really hard to just sum up into a nice condensed little YouTube title. And so that's what I'm going to be talking about right now. And if you heard that, that means my oven's going off. Hi, if you're also new here and this is my first video for you to find, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michelle, Twisted Disaster, Michi. Uh, please follow my other social media. And yeah, I make topics, I make rambles, I make art videos, I talk about whatever I want. Uh, I stream art and games and stuff on Twitch. Um, I have an Etsy shop, I'm a self-employed artist, and I do, do, do all that good, good, Jazz. And sometimes I am a very opinionated person. I shouldn't say sometimes. Most of the time I'm a very opinionated person. And so that's why I like making videos like this where I can spew my uh, thoughts and opinions out there for people to listen to and relate to. Because the reason why I'm making this, the, the, the real core reason why I'm making this video is when everything was happening with the creep show art situation from the start to now, I was also one of those people's, people's, <laughs> great grammar. I was one of the people that never wanted to make a video on Shannon back in her heyday. And the reason simply was that there are certain content creators, not just on this app, it's on every single social media platform. I need to emphasize this because if for some reason, there's a lot of people who are in a bubble that are like, well, this is why I'm happy I moved to Twitch. It's on Twitch. Well, this is why I'm happy I moved to TikTok. It's on TikTok. It is on every single platform where content creators weaponize their fans. Because that's what it comes down to. There are people out there who weaponize their fans because they know they can. And that's why you have, excuse me, that's why you have these mass, like, instances of you know people using it as a threat and i've talked to a lot of people offline because you guys didn't know this um a lot of my friends are not content creators they they really aren't i have a lot of full-time artist friends who do not do this whatsoever i have friends in other walks of life and so when i tell them about stuff like this they think it's wild and crazy because it's not stuff that happens in real life but if this is your job it's like someone like me this can drastically affect how you work and how you live and all the hard work you've put into. I don't think enough people understand that unless you strike lightning in a bottle, being a content creator and being a freelancer in the sense of what I do is extremely hard work. I constantly have people asking me like, oh my God, how did you do this? Did you? I've been doing this. This is something I've been doing for years. It's something I've been doing since before I was able to make it my job. It comes with a lot of hard work and 
when you are someone with a lot of hard work, when it's just snatched away from you from relatively a terrible person, it makes you upset. It makes you scared. And there have been many a time where I myself wanted to speak up against people like this when my friends were, you know, getting attacked or getting hurt. And I had to constantly hold back because I was sitting here like, I really want to help. But until someone bigger says something, nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to change. And I'm not even saying that it is a place of fear. It is. And it's why I get so mad. Like, I actively get mad because I don't think people realize, again, I'm, I'm using Shannon just as an example here, but this could be any big content creator that weaponizes their fan base and their followers. Um, where it was on so many platforms of people talking about it. There's this Twitch streamer I follow. Love this girl. Love her art. Love her comic. And she was talking about it. And she was talking about uh, about how she was like, I didn't know any of this stuff, but oh my god, this is horrible, and blah blah blah. This is why I don't like saying my opinions online. I don't like people getting to know me because I don't want this to happen to me. And it's a really sad bubble that that's a thing a lot of people have to consider. A lot of people really have to be like, okay, because of people like this, I don't want to put my true self out there. I don't want to let people know my opinions on things or about my personal life. Now, before anybody says anything, obviously no one's entitled to that. If you want to keep it private yourself, go right ahead. But it's the inherent fear of all of the hard work you've been doing just snatched away in an instant because of people like this. Every single time this has happened, I get upset because I saw so many people who were a lot like me where you know when the lol cow stuff came out we were like oh i knew it i always knew it could never say it publicly but yeah that makes sense then the emily artful stuff it became very serious and it wasn't fun anymore it wasn't like oh this is karma it was well this is that it was karma but it was a whole new level of karma you know what i mean this was a whole new veil that was lifted and let's be honest i genuinely believe the only reason emily artful came out when she did was because of the fact that Shannon was under fire. Pe the veil was lifted. The veil was lifted on people. And I also don't like when people who are like me, you know, who, who never liked her content to begin with, are attacking the people that did. There were so many people that were like, oh, I'm seeing all these posts where it's like, oh, I knew, but this is well, I didn't. I did these are examples because I, I knew she was a snake in the grass back when she attacked content creators that had such lower followings than her and using very specific verbiage to weaponize her fans. And I keep reiterating it because that's what people do, okay? That is what people do. It's why I get so irritated when people say that Shannon was an idiot. She wasn't, okay? She really wasn't. She got caught. There's a big difference. You don't get away with doing this stuff for so long and you're stupid. It's it's just, that's not how that works. It's not how that works. It She got caught. That's another really big thing I would like for people to acknowledge. It's, it's something I don't like, but it's certain verbiage and it's weaponized in certain things. When you make a finger quote safe place for people who are trusting, there are certain words you say, and while you are not inherently sending your fans to bully them, you are. I remember there was this content creator that I no longer support a long time ago. This is this was this was years ago. Uh, not an art person. It was a uh, uh, just a nerdy game person. It came out that this person had a Tumblr blog that was in the guise of um, like loving oneself and you know body positivity. Again, we're we're using a good movement here to get their mostly underage fan base to send them suggestive pictures. Now, it wasn't legally CP because, you know, most of them were clothed, but they were all minors and this person was well into their 30s. This was a really big deal. And I remember how disgusted I was because I didn't know this existed. I only followed them on, you know, this platform and like Twitter. 
And so when this happened, I was like, oh my God. And then like, I read the things and I looked at the things and it's all about the verbiage. It's the manipulation of it. And I remember when this person finally came back, I remember being like, okay, this is a 30 year old man. He's going to take responsibility and be like, okay, I genuinely didn't want it to be this thing. Power went to my head. I'm sorry, guys. But of course that's not what happened because that's not whatever. That's never what happens with these things. What this person then did was call out the miners that were posting to this Tumblr that he was controlling. And in doing so, he was like, now listen, everyone, I'm not saying attack these people. They were children. They were children. But I'm going to have every single one of their social media handles in my description so they can link directly to it. And uh, I'm going to post them all in the video and I'm going to post, you know, all of their art and I'm going to post all of this stuff so you can, you know, easily find them. But don't follow them, guys. Don't follow this person that ruined my life. Don't don't follow these people that, you know, that lied to me, the adult that made a uh, suggestive, safe for work uh, body positivity vlog when your audience is mostly children. Don't blame me, the 30 year old man blame the children and this person's fan base was so big that half the people were like me where they were like uh and the other half were like oh my god how could this per oh my guys we're gonna we're gonna knock these miners off these platforms that's what we're gonna do because they hurt our stan they hurt our boy they made him sad in the fifis and this is something i see so much i see it so much on every social media i have seen it on twitter i've seen it on instagram i've seen it on da i've seen it on for infinity i've seen it on tumblr i've seen it it is it is a social media thing when people get to a certain point okay and obviously not everybody but i'm gonna be honest with you guys there have been times where I have thought about it. There were there were things that happened to me that I was like, oh my God, I, I want to talk about this. I want to call this out. I, it's, it's, oh, oh, this is horrible. These people did these terrible things to me. But you know what I did? You know what I did? I thought for a minute and I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to complain to my friends because I'm an adult and uh, I'm not going to weaponize my fans and followers because I don't want to be that person. Because, honey, uh, uh, freaking nobody's perfect. I've talked about this. There are opinions that I've said online that I no longer agree with. There are things that I've done that I no longer agree with. I have grown and changed. I'm not trying to hide my past. I, I, again, people can grow and change. So I'm not scared of that. I'm not scared of people trying to, you know, cancel me because people have tried before and I apologized for it. And I look back and in the in those times, I was wrong. I was wrong. The stuff I said was wrong. And I don't stand for it now because people can grow and change. But you know what I didn't do? You know what I didn't do when some of those videos were coming out about me and some of my friends and stuff? I didn't then go and blast where those videos were. I didn't blast these people's social media. I didn't, you know, very badly censor stuff. Because that's another thing. Whenever I see someone who's got a really, really big following, because I'm not considering myself with a big following. I'm not. I'm bouncing between that 50K. I almost have it and then it's gone. And I, I would love to, I want to get that 100K so bad someday, but that's not the time for this. Um, that's just how the freaking platform works. But... They had smaller numbers than me, and I didn't want to punch down, because I think that's that's gross. Uh, I didn't want my fans to be manipulated into thinking that I was more upset than I was, because I have fans and followers. But there are people out there that don't care. There's a lot of people that don't care. There's a lot of people that can't take criticism. There's a lot of people that cannot take being in the wrong. And those are the people I worry about the most. Okay, because those are people with really big followings and really loyal followers and fans. And it's why I always see something like, you know, uh, Stan culture and all that stuff upsetting. Because, again, I, 
I, I like to think of it when I was younger. Uh, you know, I grew up in the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm ancient it, on the internet. Um, I remember when my parents were obsessed with celebrities. Like, like every time they would put on the news or something, you know, it would be like, oh my God, did you believe that Britney Spears went to a McDonald's? Or Miley Cyrus, you know, freaking farted in public or something stupid. And I remember my parents were like, oh my God, can you believe that? And I'd be like, yeah, they're people. They're, they're people, right? And it's the same thing you see now. Like, that's why I think it's funny when people are like, oh, social media is such a... It is not. It is not different. People have not changed. They just evolved to a different platform. They just evolved to a digital platform. That's just how it is. And... It makes it so upsetting that I am seeing because these are coming these are coming more and more and more and more. You're going to learn less and less about people. You're gonna see people putting masks up, and you're gonna keep seeing this manipulation follow. And it's something that I wish more people would talk about, but they can't. They can't because when they're people like me, who've worked really hard, who've, you know, who've been trying for years who's put in all this hour and times and effort, they've seen how people can get snuffed out in seconds. They've seen how all that hard work could just flitter away. And it's why other people are moving to other platforms and why other people are putting more eggs in one basket and people are updating portfolios and keeping job opportunities open in the off chance that this could happen. Or you know how to get away with it? You don't talk online. You don't share personal interests. You just do your work and you leave. And for some people, that's fine. For some people, they're content with that and they're happy with that. But I find it very sad. I find it very sad when it just comes into the art sphere that there are so many artists I love and I know nothing about them. Am I entitled to know things about them? No, not at all. But, you know, I would like to know if they like certain types of games or what some of their opinions are on things. Or things like that. I don't need a daily like view into their life, obviously. And I know there are people who are. But I like knowing the person behind the artist. I like knowing the person behind the gaming. On, let's be honest. It's a big reason why a lot of people like Markiplier and like Jacksepticeye and stuff. And those bigger people is because we know them as well as their funny content. You know, it's, it's kind of the point of a content creator. And I have met people with amazing art and horrible personalities there have been people i met in person that i was very excited to meet and then when i got to know them i was like oh my god you are horrible people but i'm not gonna ruin that for other people they're not hurting anybody they're staying in their own lane i'm just staying in mine but this is why people don't want to speak up people will want to make an honest critique or an honest viewpoint or point something out that someone horrible did and then instead of having the person who in 99.9% .9 of the times is an adult. Well, then turn it around and be like, oh my God, they made me sad. Guys, they made me so sad. Guys, uh, oh my God, here's all their social medias. They made me so sad. They made me not want to go online. They made me not want to contact with you. So they're, you know, hurting you because I'm your, I'm your comfort character. And I'm not, I am not, because legally I'd get in trouble. So I'm not saying follow them, but here is where you can find them. Here's their videos. Here's their social media. Here's their names on things. I'm not doxing them because I don't know their real name, but I mean, if I would, I probably would. But, you know, here's just... Who cares if they're minors? Who cares if they're people that are hurt? Who cares if they're people who have valid critique where you could just take the L and admit the critique? Who cares? They made me sad. They made me sad. And now I'm telling you about how they made me sad. Because that's what it's like when I weaponize my fans. I manipulate their emotions. Because I know that people have a parasocial relationship with me. And I'm going to ruin them. Because I don't, like, I don't like feeling sad, guys. I don't like feeling angry. I don't like feeling like I was wrong. Because I'm not wrong. I live in my little bubble of perfect... And I know that's obviously a very exaggerated example, but that's honestly how I see it sometimes. Because I've, at least for me, I've seen it so much that I, I, 
I catch the signs before, like, that's what they're saying. It's what they're coming down and what they are saying. But using more flowery language or, you know, another good example is when you see them stage things. You know, it's, it's the joke of wearing the gray hoodie in a white room. There's a reason for that. You know, oh, this person suddenly doesn't use music anymore. I think he was really sad music. So when they're talking about things, you'll feel sad. It's, 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 it's manipulation and it's gross. And until more people start treating content creators like people over idols, it's never going to change. You're going to have people like what I was talking about, where you have people that are scared to speak up until that person's pedestal falls. That's why you're seeing people make thousands of videos all about the situation. You know, it's the same thing with any other drama person on this on this platform. And I'm not saying that I haven't. Again, this whole video stems from that. But I want to see a change. I want to see more people being self-aware. And I want to see more people being less hurt. Revolutionary, I know. I know. I don't like seeing people get hurt. But it's true. It's what I mean. Because we have fans that look up to us. We have people that inspire. I cannot tell you how many times at conventions I've had younger people come up to me and tell me that I inspired them in some way. And there were a couple that were like, oh yeah, because of you, I want to go to art school. And because of you, I want to do... And I had to hold back crying because I'm like, oh, I, I really do have an influence on people. Even when I don't think I do. Oh, my content brings people joy like how other people's content brings me joy. I don't just enjoy doing this for myself. I, I help other people. And that makes me really happy. But I, th I think of those, I think of those faces because I get out of my bubble, because I go to different things. And I remember that there are people behind what I'm talking to. When I make these videos, I'm thinking of the people I am talking to. While there are other people that just see numbers, and they just see a paycheck, and they just see a microphone. And that's all they care about. Someone hurt them. They now have power to hurt them back. And all it takes is talking into a microphone. And maybe some music, maybe some very suggestive wording, you know, playing lots of legal jargon. But when the numbers are there and they just snipe people before they can even talk, we're not going to have those conversations because you shouldn't. You shouldn't have a giant platform to call out bigotry and jerks and horrible people on platforms. You shouldn't. But a lot of fans are ride or die, and that's the problem. They no longer see this person as a person. They see them as a being. You are you are an entity. You are something else. And that's why I want to make this video. Because uh, until more people see that, it's going to keep happening. It's going to keep happening. People are going to keep talking. Younger content creators or just smaller content creators are going to have their livelihoods taken away because there are people who just can't take critique or criticism. And now before anybody, you know, let me wrap this up, before anybody says anything, there is a difference between criticism and hate. That's a very, very blatant line. I've gotten hate comments where people are like, oh my God, you're deleting comments. And then I'm looking at it, I'm like, uh, bro, you're saying slurs? And YouTube did its job. I don't delete comments unless they do have like slurs or hate speech in it because that's gross. But when you say something like, wow, uh, the art sucks, or wow, your audio sucks, or oh my god, stop talking, you're horrible. Those aren't critiques. A critique is like, oh hey, try doing this, or ooh, you know, didn't agree with this take, maybe you should look into this. Nah, nah, nah. There are ways to do it. And there are ways to accept it. But also, not all critiques have to be positive. Again, I, yeah, I, I've had negative critiques on me and my art. And I've, you know what I did? When they were respectful enough, even though they weren't good, I took them with stride and I learned from them because I'm an adult and I don't want to live my life in a bubble. And I think other people should too. And yeah, you know, the normal stuff. That's it. I'm done. I'm done rambling. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please let me know your opinions down below. 
And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.